friends good evening and welcome to tech toast with science spread this is your rj vidya you are listening to number 1 internet radio station at www.radioudan.com this show as you all know by now is based on science and technology and this is our 29th episode in this show too i am bringing information interesting information to you if you want to give me any feedback or you want me to explain any topic in science or to have any interesting article to contribute you can always send in your emails to vidya.y93 at gmail.com i repeat vidhya.y93 at gmail.com today let's start off with some interesting information related to science and technology that is current affairs section and after this we we'll listen to an interesting interview of math genius jake first we'll start off with the current affairs section now since you all know that from past Three or four shows. We are taking a look at latest happenings in the field of science and technology. This is really important because you need to keep yourself updated with scientific world. Because technology and science, there are many discoveries every time, and you can't just stay with the outdated information, right? Like few years back, say five years back, Android phones were not that common. and just 10 years back it wasn't even introduced but now without android we can't stay right so we can't just keep talking about the technologies that were already invented and uh, scientific discoveries that have already happened so you need to stay updated with the latest happenings in the field of science and technology that's why i thought this is a very important section for of the show because you need to keep updated with latest happenings in field of science and technology so today too we'll be talking about the uh, latest happening may be happening since one or two weeks so first you know what a fish is we'll be talking about fishes fishes are a category of vertebrates that means vertebrates means the animals that have backbones there are lot of animals that do not have backbones and they are called as invertebrates but vertebrates have backbones and the main classifications between uh, in this category of vertebrates is fishes amphibians reptiles mammals and birds i think one of the uh, days in any of the show i'll be briefing you about all these animal categories but today in brief let me tell you that fishes belong to category of vertebrates that means fishes have backbones there are lots of animals without backbones and these animals are called as invertebrates but fishes have backbones so they are called as vertebrates and they are one animal category in vertebrates so today we will be talking about a latest fish that is discovered and it is warm blooded generally all fishes are are cold blooded and few are semi warm blooded that means they are not so cold not so warm but this is fully warm they have discovered a fish that is fully warm blooded now before even continuing further let me tell you what are cold blooded and warm blooded animals basically warm blooded animals they generate their own heat and maintain body temperature independent of the environment they are known as endotherms they are also known as endotherms that can be called as endotherms or warm blooded animals most of the mammals and birds are warm blooded animals so what they are trying to tell is most of the animals warm blooded animals generate their own heat and whether the temperature is cold or hot they maintain a constant body temperature which is little bit warm and their blood is little warm and they are also called as endotherms so most of the mammals and birds are of this category mammals are the animals that um, give milk to their own babies 
they feed milk and they give birth to young ones directly without laying eggs so birds you all know birds have feathers and they yeah they lay eggs now warm blooded animals generate their own heat and they maintain a body temperature independent of the environment and they are known as endotherms say you go to water you have the same body temperature if you come out of water also you have same body temperature water is cold but you don't change your temperature when you are in water when you come out also you have constant uh, temperature because you are able to generate your own heat you are able to maintain it like this so these are warm blooded animals and all mammals in yeah humans are also part of mammals so even they maintain even they maintain uh, their temperature so they are called as warm blooded animals but cold blooded animals are just opposite of this cold blooded animals their body temperature depends on the temperature of their surroundings thus they are hot when environment is hot and cold if the environment is cold and they are also called as ectotherms most of the amphibians reptiles invertebrates and most fishes are cold blooded animals so this is just the opposite they can't maintain their temperature and they don't generate heat so when they are put in cold surroundings they are cold when they come out of cold surroundings they are hot when the temperature is hot they'll be hot when it's cold they'll be cold so they're called as cold blooded animals because they can't maintain heat i mean they can't generate heat and maintain a constant temperature so they are called as cold blooded animals and they can also be called as ectotherms most of the amphibians reptiles invertebrates and fishes are cold blooded animals so what are reptiles the example of reptiles are snakes etc they don't have legs mostly and invertebrates i told you they actually don't have backbones amphibians are nothing but those animals that live both on water and land and fishes you know you, you know about fishes that fishes have mostly scales and all these animals are example of cold blooded animals so fishes are generally cold blooded the speciality of this new fish that's in uh, that's discovered is is it is warm blooded that means it can maintain a constant temperature so let me talk about that now they have generally fishes are cold blooded but they have discovered one of the fish that is warm blooded whilst first fully warm blooded fish named opa or moonfish was discovered recently it was discovered by scientists at the us national oceanic and atmospheric administration which is noaa so it was discovered by scientists of us at noaa and this fish is called moonfish or opa o p a h there is a scientific name of this fish which is moonfish and this is the first ever world's first ever warm blooded fish that means it it generates heat for itself and maintains constant temperature whether it comes to cold surroundings or hot surroundings it maintains constant temperature so it's called as warm blooded and mostly fishes are cold blooded and this is the first ever warm blooded fish Opa or moonfish has ability to circulate heated blood throughout its body which makes its first fish to be fully warm blooded so it generates heat and it circulates heated blood throughout the body and so it's called as warm blooded and this is the first ever warm blooded fish now facts about opa fish there are many facts about opa fish let's take a look at all of them Opa fish has rusty reddish color with white spots and bright red fins. Fishes have fins and these fins help in balance and also movement in the water. It helps in locomotion. That is when the fish swim, fins help in swimming and also it helps to balance in water because fish shouldn't sink in water, right? It has to balance itself. So it uses fins for this purpose and fins also help in locomotion that is movement in water that means fishes swim through fins 
so opa fish has rusty reddish color with white spots and bright red fins so its fins color is bright red it weighs up to 90 kg and has oval body shape oval body shape have you touched egg that is the shape i mean it is in the shape of egg that is oval shape oval shape means it's almost like an egg it's basically egg shape it has body of egg shape and its weight is 90 kg it is deep water denizen denizen means its main inhabitants is in the deep water that means naturally it stays in deep water and usually it's found in oceans worldwide and generally found in the depths of 50 to 400 meters so if you go 50 to 400 meters down in the sea in oceans you can find these fishes it's generally found worldwide it is a vigorous predator and frigid ocean depth and preys on fish and squid so it is vigorous predator what is predator that means it eats other animals that means it attacks and eat other animals and it feeds on fishes and squid unique capability it has this unique capability which is found this is very interesting it can internally generate heat through constant flapping of wing like pectoral fin so it flaps those fins and then it generates heat when it flaps its fins that means when it moves in water obviously it flaps fins that means for moment it just keeps flapping fins and while it's doing this it basically generates heat and after generating heat what happens it has unique structure and this structure also helps to prevent this heat from being lost to environment as its gills let cold blood to heat up which is written from the um, gills respiratory system that means what happens when it flaps those fins heat is generated and this heat water is cold so heat shouldn't go off in this water so what happens is its unique structure also helps in preventing heat from being lost to environment as its gills let warm blood to heat up cold blood retaining from the gills respiratory surface now what gills does is through the warm blood it generates it helps to heat up other cold blood and so heat is preserved it basically takes in the heat which the fins uh, which comes through flapping of fins and it allows cold blood to heat up and so each time this process happens and he, uh, fish maintains warm blood this is how the process happens this generated heat as has an average muzzle temperature about 4 to 50 celsius above the surrounding water temperature being a warm blood fish it has distinct advantages such as faster swimming speed and reaction time it has better brain and eye function and it can also withstand the effects of cold on vital organs compared to cold blooded fish these are all the advantages of having warm blood so being warm blooded fish it has distinct advantages such as faster swimming speed and reaction time better brain and eye function and it withstands the effects of cold on vital organs compared to cold blood body fish so let me repeat the entire thing for you again so that you can remember it better world's first fully warm blooded fish named opa or moonfish was discovered recently it was discovered by scientists in us national oceanic and atmospheric administration which is 
N O A A. Now, some of the facts are Opa or Moonfish has ability to circulate heated blood throughout its body, which makes its first, which makes it first fully warm-blooded fish. Opa fish has rusty reddish color with white spots and bright red fins. Fins, you should remember that they help the fish move and also balance. It weighs up to 90 kg and has oval body shape. Oval shape is just like egg. It is deep water denizen and it is usually found in oceans worldwide and generally found at depths of 50 to 400 uh, meters. It is a vigorous predator and preys on fish and squid. It mainly eats fishes and squids. Squids are also another type of sea animals. Unique capability is it can internally generate heat through constant flapping of wind like petrel fins. Its unique structure also helps to prevent this heat from being lost to the environment and as its skill as its gills allow warm blood to heat up cold blood returning from the gills respiratory system. This generated heat has average muzzle temperature about 4 to 50 Celsius above the surrounding water temperature. Being a warm blooded fish, it has distinct advantages such as faster swimming speed and reaction time, better brain and eye function and it also withstands the effects of cold on vital organs compared to cold blood fish. These are all the advantages of having warm blood. So I hope you found this fact interesting. Welcome to the world of invention, creativity and discovery. Here is an opportunity for all of us to explore the ocean of knowledge. This show is all about emerging trends in science and technology, math, quiz, facts and much more. So friends, get ready to listen Tech Toast with Science Spread with your RJ Vidya only on Radio Odan every Monday from 7 to 8 p.m. and rebroadcast every Tuesday from 2 to 3 p.m. Pratima ki pehchan Pratya ki muskaan Sabalango ka saathi ye hai Radio Uran रेडियो उड़ान के प्रोग्राम्स की जानकारी के लिए, शोज में पार्टिसिपेट करने के लिए, किसी भी शो को फीडबैक देने के लिए, आर्काइव रिक्वेस्ट करने के लिए, आरजे बनने के लिए, और अपने फेवरेट आरजेस की प्रोफाइल्स पढ़ने के लिए, लॉग इन करें www.radiourudan.com, स्काइप आईडी रेडियो उड़ान, ईमेल मेल एट रेडियो Radio Udan, a flight of life. ये आवाज है हमारे मेंबर्स के द्वारा भेजे जाने वाले ईमेल कम्युनिकेशन की ये आवाज है हमारे ग्रुप के द्वारा ऑर्गेनाइज की जाने वाली कन्वेंशन और वर्कशॉप में पार्टिसिपेट करने वाले लोगों की और इन सब का नाम है से एवरीथिंग से एवरीथिंग इज अ ग्रुप ऑफ इंटीग्रेशन सेवरिथिंग यानी एक आवाज, विचार और अभिव्यक्ति। Say everything is a group of free expression. Say everything is an international mailing list to learn and share, where the subscribers can discuss every topic of common interest via email exchange from around the world. For more information and to subscribe our mailing list. Please log on to www.sayeverything.org. Say everything.
India's number one international leading list. Come and join us today. रेडियो उड़ान सुन रहे सभी मित्रों को मेरा प्यार भरा नमस्कार मेरा नाम मधु सिंगल है मैं बेंगलोर में कार्यरत संस्था मित्र ज्योति जो पिछले 25 वर्षों से दृष्टिहीनों एवं दूसरे विकलांग व्यक्तियों के लिए कार्यरत है उसकी मैनेजिंग ट्रस्टी हूँ इस संस्था की गतिविधियाँ इस प्रकार हैं यहाँ पर दृष्टिहीनों के लिए ऑडियो में पुस्तकें रिकॉर्ड की जाती हैं इसके साथ साथ ब्रेल में और स्कैंड पुस्तकें भी उनको दी जा रही हैं कंप्यूटर प्रशिक्षण और रोजगार की सुविधाएं भी यहाँ प्रदान की जा रही हैं दृष्टिहीन महिलाओं के लिए एक विशेष प्रकार का कोर्स चलाया जाता है जिसमें उन्हें आत्मनिर्भर बनकर जीवन में आगे बढ़ने की क्षमता प्रदान की जा रही है आप मित्र ज्योति ऐसी संपर्क कर सकते हैं यहाँ का फोन नंबर है जीरो एट जीरो डबल टू फाइव एट सेवन सिक्स टू थ्री और डबल टू फाइव एट सेवन सिक्स टू फाइव ई मेल एड्रेस है एडमिन डॉट ऑफिस एट द रेट ऑफ मित्र ज्योति डॉट ओ आर जी वेबसाइट है डब्ल्यू 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 डॉट मित्र ज्योति डॉट ओ आर जी रेडियो उड़ान के माध्यम से शुभ समाचार अंकित कपूर संदीप अरोड़ा विनय खुराना का शानदार प्रयास प्रयास तो दिलों को मिलाने का तो आइए रजिस्टर कीजिए और पाइए मनचाहा हम सफर ज्यादा जानकारी के लिए आप रजिस्टर करें www.vijaybansari.com पर आप कॉल कर सकते हैं 9501751000 एंड यू कैन ड्रॉप एन ईमेल टू इन्फो एट डिजेबल मैट्रीमोनियल डॉट कॉम हाय हाय मैं क्या करूं मेरी बेटी को देखो अच्छी खासी एक्सपर्ट है हर काम में कंप्यूटर में भी अच्छी खासी जॉब भी करती है लेकिन फिर भी जब भी लड़के वाले देखने आते हैं ना तो चेक करते चले जाते हैं पर क्यों क्योंकि ना उसको खाना नहीं बनाना आता क्या करूं क्या करो ट्यून इन करो हर मंगलवार शाम आठ से नौ रेडियो उड़ान पर जहां मैं आर जी चेतना आपको सिखाऊंगे प्रोग्राम की जन तड़का में जायकेदार डिशेस बनाना कहानी वेद पुराणों की मनोरंजक कहानियां जीवन को राह दिखलाने वाली कहानियां धार्मिक सांस्कृतिक सामाजिक और राजनीतिक हर पक्ष को छूती हैं कहानियाँ तो इन्हीं कहानियों को मैं सुनाने आ रही हूँ यानी आज गीता सुमन शो कथा लोक में हर मंगलवार शाम सात से आठ और हर बुधवार दोपहर दो से तीन तो सुनना मत भूलिएगा सिर्फ और सिर्फ रेडियो उड़ान पर Hey friends, do you think that life is getting so stressful? Well, if it is so, why not make it quite inspirational, motivational, and stress-free? So let us meet in a world of positivity in the show Inspirational Wings Season Two. Every Tuesday 9 to 10 p.m. and repeat every Wednesday 4 to 5 p.m. with Arjit Vijay Sharma only on Radio Udan a flight of life For more information visit our website www.radioudan.com Now next fact in the field of science will be something related to important days Important days we have so many right like June 5th is World Environment Day 
and April 7th is um, health day and things like that we have so many days and this is related to science and technology so I am telling you this fact this is related to important events and days May 11th it is national technology day national means it's celebrated only in our country only in India it's celebrated as national technology day and this is observed every year on May 11th let me tell you what is the significance of this day and the history why we started observing this day as national technology day technology is really important right everything mostly happens through technology science and technology are really important like you want to talk on phone you use technology and especially for the disabled community technology is helping us all of us a lot like you want to talk you use phone you want to navigate you use smart canes these days and there are various technology even you can listen to this only because of technology right we listen to this show you can listen only to technology and all information you get it on fingertips just for just because of technology and screen reader is also one of the main advancements in the field of technology for the disabled community so there are many things technology list goes on and on and without technology there's hardly anything these days so people felt the need to observe one day as national technology day and it's observed throughout the country on may 11th now let me tell you the significance of this day may 11th is observed as national technology day every year in india every year national technology day is observed across india on may 11th this day glorifies the importance of science in day-to-day -day life and motivates students to opt science as career option so this basically encourages students in the field of science and allows them and it also motivates them to opt science as a career we already saw, saw that males dominant the field of science and technology day i think i told you when we had uh, celebration of women's day that women are uh, likely they have lesser chance of taking science as their career because of many uh, societal pressures like people will have to women will have to get married and take care of the family that's believed but these days it's changing but to motivate all students to take up science as a career this day is celebrated and national technology day is being commemorated to celebrate the anniversary of first of the five tests of operations shakti pokhran 2 shakti which is also called as pokhran 2 it is a nuclear test which was held in Rajasthan on 11 May 1998 in Pokhran. Pokhran is in Rajasthan. So National Technology Day is being commemorated to celebrate the anniversary of first of the five tests of Operation Shakti which is also called as Pokhran 2. It is a nuclear test which was held on 11 May 1998 in Pokhran. Rajasthan. Apart from Pokhran nuclear test, on this day, first indigenous aircraft Hansa 3 was flown in Bangalore, and India also conducted successful test firing of Trishul mission on the same day. There were so many achievements on the same day. Hamsa aircraft was also flown in Bangalore on May 11th and also India conducted successful test firing of the Trishul missile on the same day that is May 11th. So Considering all these achievements, 11th May was chosen to be commemorated as National Technology Day. 
so um, there were three achievements three main achievements of india that is pokhran 2 whatever i told you and trishul missile and hansa aircraft all these achievements happened on the same day that is may 11th so this is chosen as national technology day every year to commemorate this day technology development board that is tdb has instituted a national award this award is conferred on to various individuals and industries for successful achievement in commercialization of indigenous technology that means the individuals or industries who successfully achieve something in the field of technology and help in commercialization of nationally available technology are given this award because awards will be given to encourage people to commercialize more and more technology that is that especially being indian based technology to use best resources and commercialize technology the award will be given if individuals or any industry has achieved in this field so let me repeat this entire thing for you may 11th is observed as national technology day every year across india this day glorifies the importance of science in day to day life and motivates students to adopt science as a career option national technology day is being commemorated to celebrate the anniversary of first of the five tests of operation shakti that is pokhran 2 nuclear test which was held on 11 may 1998 in pokhran rajasthan apart from pokhran nuclear test on this day first indigenous aircraft hansa 3 was flown in bangalore and india also conducted successful test firing of trishul missile on the same day considering all these achievements 11 may was chosen to be commemorated as national technology day to commemorate this day technology development board that is tdb has instituted national award This award is conferred on to various individuals and industries for their successful achievement in commercialization of indigenous technology. So this was the importance of this day that is May 11th and remember May 11th is observed as National Technology Day every year. I hope you found this information too interesting. लकड़ी की काठी का ठीपे घोड़ा घोड़े की दुम पैजू मारा हथौड़ा दौड़ा 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 घोड़ा दुम उठा के दौड़ा पंचम एक बड़ा मासूम सा बच्चा था तुम्हारे साथ जो तुम्हारे अंदर तुम्हारे मिजाज में जीता था शरीर भी पाजी भी हंसता खेल सब प्रैक्टिकल जोक्स करता हुआ उसे हमने उदास नहीं होने दिया लकड़ी की काठी काठी पे
let's listen to the interview of a child math prodigy who is Jacob Barnett. Why I have chosen this person is because he had autism and in spite of his disability, let's see how he got inspiration to pursue what he liked. This child math genius graduated at the age of 13 and he learned high school math from 6th to 12th grade in just one year. And after 13 years, he decided to pursue his PhD. So let's learn more about him by listening to his interview. Child prodigies have long been a source of great fascination. We wonder, how can so much talent reside in such a young body, so much genius? In a moment, you'll meet Jake, a 13-year-old math and science prodigy who's confident he may one day challenge some of the established theories of physics. The source of that talent and that confidence comes from our most remarkable organ, the one we understand least, the brain. What is it about Jake Barnett that had him taking college courses at age eight and getting A's, and by 12, doing paid scientific research. The story will continue in a moment. And today, at age 13, an honors college sophomore lecturing the crowd at his university science symposium. And do any of you guys want my resume at all? The untied shoelaces reveal either your average teenager or the first telltale signs of the absent-minded professor, cool. or both. Let's look at the system of points. Surrounded by researchers twice his age, Jake is presenting his summer physics research project on PT symmetric lattice systems. This has implications in fiber optics, electromagnetic signals, anything that requires like a light going through a cable. Got it? Every number or math problem I ever hear, I have permanently remembered. You just never forget. They never, yeah, never slip forget. out the back mm -hmm. door of your brain. No. Is it fun for you to do it? I mean, do you get a mm -hmm. kick out of it? Yeah. For Jake, fun is reciting from memory the infinite series of numbers known as pi. 3.14159265358979323846264338327950 Jake memorized more than 200 of pi's numbers in an afternoon. And he did it just to test himself. You want me to go backwards from there? Well, sure. 32397985356264338 Bravo. <laughs> He's not just parroting a textbook. He understands and analyzes the logic of higher mathematics. He can visualize and solve complex problems by using what he calls the fourth dimension. Just exactly what is the fourth dimension? It's hard to describe in terms of the typical three because it's tangent to all the other ones. I'd be able to describe it if I had like a whiteboard and like 30 minutes to describe it. It takes a while. It's the fourth dimension. What do you expect? The numbers appear to him as shapes that he says just build on one another. So this, for example, is 3 cubed or 27. And then if I want to do 54, I just stack another one onto it. He says his mind is constantly buzzing with new physics problems and theories. When he runs out of wall space, he moves on to windows. Remembering things so precisely, does that ever become a burden to you? No, not at all. No sense of uh, overload? In terms I remember of... math and numbers. I don't remember other things. For example, if someone asks me where something is in the house, I tell them I don't know. The oldest of four kids, Jake lives with his family in the suburbs of Indianapolis. These are my periodic table. It's got all my elements. He used the money he made from his summer research project, $3,200, to turn his bedroom into a science lab. Copernicus was the most recently named element. For as long as he can remember, he's been fascinated by the mysteries of space. Saturn is my favorite planet, not due to the rings, but due to some of its moons. Any ambition to be an astronaut? 
Um, not an astronaut. Um, that's, like, too dangerous. I'm going to be the guy controlling the astronauts. If anyone's an astronaut, it's going to be my brother. <laughs> All work and only occasional play does not make Jake a dull boy. What do you do for fun? When it isn't anything academic? No, I mean, beyond the, the academics. Does looking up space articles online count? <laughs> I a cube divided. He has a full scholarship at the joint Indiana University Purdue campus in Indianapolis, where he is an honor student in math and physics. He may not be the tallest student on campus, but is surely among the brightest. He regularly gets the highest grades in his classes. What happens if you have C sub n, where it's proportional to n? Jake's been auditing classes here since the ripe old age of eight, when it became obvious to his parents that third grade was not going to be enough for him. What did your fellow students make of you? Everyone was thinking that mom was taking the class and she couldn't find a babysitter. The students thought I was the student. His parents, Christine and Michael Barnett, expected their son would quietly listen and learn. But even they were shocked when Jake jumped right into scientific discussions. The professor would ask questions and Jake was answering them. And then he took the final at the end and got an A on it. And suddenly the people at the university took notice of that and eventually invited him to attend the university. It's pretty shocking when an eight-year-old aces a university astronomy course. Weren't you impressed? <laughs> I guess I was impressed. <laughs> I was just doing what I like to do. No one could have predicted that Jake would even make it to college. Just before his second birthday, he began to regress, stopped speaking and making eye contact. After consulting with several doctors, the diagnosis was autism. We went through speech therapy, physical therapy, developmental therapy, occupational therapy. A therapist came to the home. He was going further and further from our world into a world of his own. And I, I really was just baffled at how we were going to get him back out of that world. And how did you get him back out of that world? We realized that Jacob was not happy unless he was doing something he loved. Which even as a three-year-old was math and science. His parents say the more he focused on the subjects he loved, the more he began to communicate. You could just see him just relax. You could just see him feel like, thank goodness we're not working on something that I can't do today. And how long did it take for him to, as you say, come back? By the time he was kindergarten age, five, six, he was still behind as far as speaking with others and socializing with others. But he was also light years ahead of everybody else. He was coming home asking us, when am I going to learn something at school today? I want to learn algebra. It was trying to keep Jake challenged that led to a kind of double life elementary school by day, and sitting in on college courses in the evening. By fifth grade, he dropped out of public school, and just to demonstrate that he was ready for college, he taught himself all of high school math in just two weeks. He was 10 years old. That was the most determined thing I've ever seen anybody do. He had to <laughs> sit in a calculus class to prove to the university that he could sit still. And Jacob was like, I'm going to participate in that class discussion. So if I need to learn Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Geometry, Trig, that's what I'm going to do. And he took a stack of books, and he sat down, and he just... Went and taught himself he, all of it in two weeks. Not only that, he finished the entire state of Indiana curriculum for grades 6 to 12 in little over a year. The Barnetts, who've started a center for autistic kids called Jacob's Place, say that many of Jake's symptoms of autism have disappeared. There are certain traits that are still there, um, and if you really, really knew what you were looking for, you could dig them out. But otherwise, you know, that I got a 10-year-old kid at that point in time that just happens to be doing next-level work and no one knew anything different. Your parents told us that you're very proud of your autism. That, I believe, is the reason why I am in college and I am so successful. It is the rise as to my love for math and science and astronomy, and it's the reason why I care. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten this far. Joanne Ruth Seth, a psychology professor at Ohio State, has been studying child prodigies for the last 13 years. 
She believes there's a link between autism and prodigies. We know that child prodigies are having autistic relatives at a very high clip, and some of them have autism themselves. She believes that what sets a prodigy with autism apart from other children with the condition is the prodigy's genes have been modified so that the genius emerges without many of the severe disabilities associated with autism. In the general population of autism, 10% will have an autistic savant skill where they're exceptional at something and they've only got that piece displaying itself. She says for prodigies, be it in math, music, or art, the key to the extraordinary talent is extraordinary memory. They all share this incredible memory, each and every one of them. In Jake's case, he's 13 years old. Mm -hmm. What's remarkable is not just this memory, but his vocabulary is so adult. Of course, they speak like adults. They've picked up so much information along the way so early in their life and continue to do so. She says a talent like Jake's is about one in 10 million. Jake's extraordinary. He's picking up information at a rate that none of us could even imagine doing it. She's tested Jake and says he literally aces every intelligence and memory test. Imagine if everything you saw you could remember. Every word you heard, you could recall that. And then you could integrate that information and come up with new ideas. That's what he's doing. Kentucky, New Mexico. A demonstration. Nevada. Dr. Rusat's named 28 Florida, states in random order. Pennsylvania. Wisconsin, no surprise, North he was able Dakota, to do it forwards Washington, and backwards in sequence Missouri, with ease. And when Texas. asked again three months later, you still remember them? Yes, yes I do. In the same order? Mm-hmm. And I can still go backwards. <laughs> and backwards? <laughs> <laughs> Give me five or ten. Kentucky, New Mexico, Nevada, Florida, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, North Dakota, Washington, Missouri, Texas, Utah, Colorado. While some may dismiss Jake's talent as simply a gift of remarkable memory, his physics professor says the boy is much more than a human calculator. Is it just great memory or something else? It is definitely something else. The great memory does help him, of course, because he, once he reads something, he remembers it. But uh, what is more important is that he has the drive to learn more. He definitely stands out as a powerhouse of raw talent. Professor Yogesh Jogolkar oversaw Jake's research project. Their work was published in Physical Review A. Jake is the youngest person to be published in that prestigious physics journal. The whole randomness thing, that's like completely against all of physics. He plans to continue his research building on Einstein's theory of relativity. His parents say he takes on these challenges with an easy grace. He has his own little tight-knit group of friends that he hangs out with, he studies with, he leads study groups. I have college-age girls calling the house wanting to know if Jake is available to study during finals. When I go to campus with him, it's like I'm walking around with Elvis. So far, the king seems to keep his celebrity status in check, more or less. Practically everyone knows who I am. Are you a star on this campus? Big man on campus. <laughs> <laughs> I just figured it out. But the little big man says he enjoys nothing more than using his talent to help fellow classmates see the beauty he sees oh. in the numbers. Thanks, Jake. You're welcome. I kind of want to try to use that to end the whole math phobia thing. Because so many people like me and millions of others are scared of math, are scared of science, correct? <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that so funny? <laughs> well, you can, almost can't understand how anyone could be. Exactly, you know? yeah. Jake is writing a book to help us overcome our fear of math, and he's on track to graduate at age 14 when he hopes to begin his Ph.D. studies. Go to 60minutesovertime.com to learn more about Jake, Groupon, and the proper way to pronounce Qatar. Sponsored by Lipitor. Now we've come to the end of the show. I hope you enjoyed today's show. In today's show, first we discussed about current affairs and in current affairs section, we discussed about National Technology Day and 
the world's first ever warm blooded fish that was recently discovered and we also heard interview interview of jacob barnett who was a child prodigy and who was a math genius and we also saw in spite of his autism how he struggled to come up in math and pursue what he liked hope you enjoyed both these sections in case you have any queries or any feedback you can always visit www.radiodan.com to give your feedback and also if you wish to get archives for any show you can visit the same website i repeat www.radiodan.com that is r a d i o u d a n or if you want to drop an email you can always send in your queries or if you want to contribute any article for the show or you want to know anything interesting in science you want me to explain any topic you can always request any information and drop me a mail to vidya.y93@gmail.com i repeat v i d h y a .y93 at gmail.com so this was your show tech toast with science spread and i was your rj vidya meet you next week at the same time with the same show but different information of course and try to get some interesting information for next week as well till then take care of yourself and keep listening to radio udan keep enjoying goodbye
फिर क्या हुआ दीदी ब्याज ने उन्हें पकड़ लिया मार डाला